Welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. I'm here in Haven at Driven Engineering. Now these guys have embraced automation from Aroa. We're going to find out what the key benefits are to smaller companies like Driven. Ray, you've been in engineering for a number of years. I mean, motorsport's a big love of yours as much as it is, is mine as well. But tell us a little bit about your background in engineering. So I started off with uh, mold tool making when I was 16. Uh, you know, did my apprenticeship there. Moved on to CNC uh, quite quickly after that. Uh, and even that was uh, F1 type work from the age of sort of 19, 20. So, uh, yeah, most of my career I've been doing motorsport work, but uh, you know now we turn our hand to anything really. And when you formed the company back in 2015, uh, the Hermley was the first machine you bought. Now that is such a bold statement, isn't it really, from a price point of view? Yeah, I mean, they're not a cheap machine, um, but you really do get what you pay for with a Hermley. Uh, you know, they're, they're excellent quality uh, and the service from Kingsbury as well. Um, so, yeah, it's, it, it was a big, big, big decision, um, but uh, yeah, I'm glad I made it in the end. And when I look at uh, some of the complex components that you're machining here, you know, you're not just working in the motorsport sector now, aerospace and oil and gas to a certain extent. You know, these machines uh, have, are built to last and the precision they get, give you, it must benefit your customers. Yeah, I mean... You know, that, that's the thing, at the end of the day, everyone's paying for them over five years, but you, you know, they'll, they'll definitely last after that um, and be as good on, you know, on the last day of the 10th year as they were on the first day of the first year. Um, so, yeah, you know, you look after them and, and they will be good machines. And the investment has really continued. You're in a brand new unit. You've only been here a few months. The machine's obviously working hard at the moment. But uh, really, on today's Swarf and Chip, we're trying to embrace why automation is the key to your success and future-proofing your company. Now, you've embraced this with Aurora through REM Systems, but what has the automation actually offered to your company since installed? It just it gives us so much more capacity, you know, rather than finishing your day's work at four, five, six o'clock and, and your machine doesn't run anymore. You know, we can load the pallet loader up and, and it'll run all night uh, and all, all weekend sometimes, you know. You get the right type of work, you load it up Friday night and you come in Monday morning with, you know, a full load of pallets that are finished and uh, you've been at home. Yeah, but uh, when, when you look at some of the um, complex natures of some of the jobs here, you know, I'm thinking, well, why embrace automation when obviously the setups are different to a certain extent? You know, where, where's that benefit actually come for your company from that? Yeah, I mean, with the Aroa, with the setup we've got there, you know, it's not just the one trick pony that you can only put one part in a vice. You know, you can put several vices on each pallet. You can put different vices on the pallets, you know. So I've got 12 pallets on that pallet loader. In theory, I could have 12 different jobs on there. Um, and, you know, as long as you're confident in the program that you've, that you've made to press the button and let it run, you know, you can, you can put anything on them. Now I suppose uh, obviously with the expansion here, uh, obviously with the automation, has this actually created more opportunity to win work now? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we can we can quote a little bit cheaper because we're running it overnight. Um, and also, you know, we've just got that more, the, the bigger load of capacity there. So rather than having, you know, just eight hours per day, as I say, you know, you can, you can have anything up to 24 hours. And you're quite a lean company, aren't you, to a certain extent? I mean, automation's obviously given you uh, something that you didn't have before. So, you know, has it increased the workflow? Yeah, definitely. I mean, there is a lack of, of skilled people to come and do the job now. Um, so, yeah, I, I took that decision to, to get the automation uh, just, to, just to keep the work flowing through, you know, rather than trying to find the right person because what we do is quite niche uh, and it's not easy to pick up and it's not easy to find the right people. So by having the automation, it's more on us rather than trying to teach somebody else the, the ways that we work. I know it's only been a couple of months since you've actually moved here, but you're already talking to us about uh, you know, new machines, more automation, more people. Uh, is this really the first footstep into automation that's given you this opportunity? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, the, the companies needs to expand uh, just to look after the customers really you know 
um, we've got to take on some more people uh, and get some more machinery because you know the machines we have here sometimes you know we just can't get through the workload so yeah we're definitely going to take on some more people and, and buy some more machinery as we go. A lot of engineers will actually think to themselves uh, there's a massive learning curve uh, for automation is it that easy? Uh, yeah you know it, it's just a case of you tell it that pallet is doing that job and and off it goes. Um, yeah it's it's seamlessly integrated with a, with a C250. Um, so obviously you know the next step of the uh, the equation is really to put more machines tools in here do you think that that will be with more automation systems as well? Yeah I can't see why not um, obviously it's got to fit with the, with the type of work that we do um, but yeah when I go out looking for a new machine I'll certainly have automation in mind to go with it. Now, Ian, automation is a big part of REM systems uh, solutions with Aurora because you look after the UK and Ireland. Now, uh, I've taken a journey to Aurora in Switzerland with you. We've done a number of different uh, facility visits talking about automation, but mainly on some of the big OEM manufacturers. Now, Driven Engineering, very lean company, but why should engineering companies who are not necessarily just doing prismatic parts uh, but also doing batch parts why should they embrace automation well the thing with the Aurora automation solution it's very very flexible so it doesn't matter if you're using you produce working with small parts through to big parts 500 by 500 cube for instance which may be machine dependent the Aurora solution offers great flexibility on part sizes cost-wise type of machines you can connect to. You can start off from a small entry-level robotic solution, Robot Easy, delivers reasonable sized pallets where you can get one or two parts onto each pallet through to a linear line loading four, five, six machines. Now, I mean, Ray's background's motorsport, that's where his passion is, and obviously, the, you know, he's worked with uh, or for Formula One companies as well. So the prismatic side of uh, his knowledge is fantastic. But, you know, I would challenge that and just say, well, why would you need an automation system? Because the nature of some of the setups. Well, the thing is, is that with the, uh, with the a piece of row automation is that you can do a lot of presetting offline onto a pallet, onto a vice, onto a fixture, and then load that into the robot, whichever particular robot you're using. But you've got this prime time that you can run perhaps larger parts in the evening, over the weekends, which is not holding up time, taking up time during the day. And as we all know, when you've been to a row, we've got this great 8,760 hours a year to keep the spindle. The target is to keep the spindle moving. And now whether you're there on site or you're not, it's still earning you money, where in a lot of instances, and in a lot of businesses st still in the UK today, the spindle sits idle for a lot of the time. A lot of engineering companies are quite passionate about brands of machine tools. How flexible is the Aero systems? Can they be fitted to any machine? Yes, within reason. Um, we can side load, we can front load, uh, we can manage the opening and closing of the truck if it hasn't got air to the table. We can connect to all the leading brands, machine control brands in the market, Siemens, Fanuc, Heidenhain, etc., uh, Mitsubishi, you know, we, we can, you know, as long as we activate the Aero option within those controls, we can communicate with the machines. Now, Ray has made a, a, a big step and a bold step, you know, buying very high quality machine tools, uh, investing in a, a brand new facility like this, obviously going down automation. And now he's talking, you know, more machine tools, more people, more automation. And a lot of engineers think um, that maybe automation de-skills it and, you know, throws jobs away. But that's not the case, is it? No, not, not at all. Uh, what it actually does is just change the, the, the role of the, uh, the engineer or the operator in the sense that instead of actually loading it physically into the machine and setting it up and clocking it on the machine which takes time, you're able to do exactly the same process but offline and put the, fi the fixture and the pallet into the robot that delivers it to the ma in to, into the machine tool. Now a lot of engineers are also saying it's about the cost per part. Is this where you start the process of looking at the way the best automation from a rower to for that specific customer? It is about the part sizes. 
the beauty of the zero points that we're able to offer is even if you started off with a UPC which is 320 by 320 you can put adapter pallets onto that to reduce the size down to 148 or even down to 50 mil pallets so the cost per part and the investment is spread over all, all the range of parts that you're liable to put into that machine tool. And automation is uh, obviously a bit of a buzzword in the UK and, and Ireland certainly and you're seeing a lot more of these cells being sold uh, in the UK and Ireland now and the more you're throwing that message out there that's obviously where a row is winning. Most definitely, I mean um, in the last two years, two and a half years, you know, we've seen a great uptake, uh, growth uh, within the automation of the row robots, mainly on the robot compact ATs that we've got here, robot eases, um, and even on linear lines. And uh, you know, that's the beauty. Even with a linear line, you can start off with one or two machines, and you can add other machine manufacturers to that line, or CMMs, or even robo washes to clean the parts and blow off dryers. Um, so it delivers great flexibility for whatever type of uh, you know, market or sector that you're in. Um, even EDM machines, we're, starting more, we're selling more and more robot compact 80s onto EDM machines. Finally, you guys have got a lot of experience in automation, but to give our audience the best way to actually embrace automation, what are three key points to remember? I think the key point, three key points to remember is that uh, keeping the spindle going, the famous 8,760 hours, the uptime, you know, the extra revenue that it can generate for a business, um, the row of flexibility in the investment, that it isn't just a short-term investment, you can spread the cost of that piece of automation over 30 odd years because that's easily uh, the life of that product of the automation and uh, you know they don't break down great reliability and finally I think it gives um, great flexibility for a business it's also encouraging hopefully going forward new blood into your business uh, generates new interest for apprentices or new people coming in that you're pushing forward with the latest technology Ray at Driven Engineering is passionate about the motorsport sector but now they embrace other sectors They've obviously spent a lot of money on the best machine tools, but now they've gone into automation. I hope on this Sporf and Chip show, we've shown you that you can keep your spindle turning.